It's hard to explain, I think, to someone who has never seen critical illness what it's like without sounding somewhat scary or sound, sounding like we're over-dramatizing the situation. Intermountain Healthcare launched a COVID-19 media campaign showing a behind-the-scenes look inside their hospitals. Some days are really good. And some days you go to work and you really hope that just someone doesn't pass away on your shift. During a virtual press conference, doctors and nurses from Intermountain talked about the impact the recent surge of COVID-19 patients has had on their hospitals. This last week, we had to open up a surge intensive care unit uh, to care for these patients at our Dixie Regional Medical Center. And starting today, both LDS Hospital and Intermountain Medical Center will both start transferring some non-critical, non-COVID patients who need hospitalization from those hospitals to our orthopedic specialty hospital in Murray. And from the day that we opened our surge ICU and continuing including today, we have more ICU patients than we would have been able to care for had we not done that. Um, I'd like to see that trend uh, turn around uh, it's not happened yet, but I think it can. Intermountain reports that a marked increase of COVID patients has had a definite strain on hospital caregivers. Patients can appear stable um, one minute and then the next minute can be very unstable and we're rushing into the room to try to stabilize them. And it can sometimes be hard to predict when those events are going to happen. Um, and so it can be very stressful. It's frightening to see so many of different ages. I never thought that I would take care of people that were my age, that were literally fighting for their life because of COVID. I never thought that we would be using iPads to communicate with family members because family members can't be here with these COVID patients. And it's so hard to describe that to other people. Well, COVID is, is not just a tough illness because of the illness itself, but it it takes you away from your loved ones and your families. I think that's, that's the difference than almost anything we've ever treated, I think, is that you are alone, except for a nurse or a doctor at your bedside, but your family generally is not there. And that, that's hard on the person, the family, and it's hard on our caregivers. The good news is the surge of those patients with the SARS-2 virus doesn't appear to be coming from schools. There's virtually no student-to-student -student transmission within the school. That doesn't mean that student-to-student -student transmission is not occurring um, in socially, uh, socially among friends outside of school, but I think we can, we can take that as a lesson. Changes in the state's guidelines regarding COVID are now based on a disease transmission index by county. According to the Health Department website, Washington County is in the moderate index, and despite tourists continuing to vacation here, the health department also reports that most of the transmission, according to contact tracing, is coming from local gatherings and social family events. They're seeing transmission in social gatherings, um, in small casual settings, um, whether it be family reunions, birthday parties, et cetera. That's where they're seeing a lot of this transmission. The patients in our hospital that have COVID our patients from our own community. Many people believe that herd immunity will allow them to become resistant or immune to the virus. But according to health officials, only 10 to 20 percent are said to have this immunity. And if you get the infection, there is no guarantee you won't get it again. Just like other coronaviruses, seasonal coronaviruses, that immunity is likely going to wane. And so if you go ahead and let's say get infected, you may be protected for a period of months, but you just does not mean you've got long-standing immunity for reinfection for SARS-CoV-2. Health officials are asking the public to again be vigilant in trying to stop the spread of this virus. And so today we're calling upon our community members to help us in this effort. We need you to mask up, to social distance appropriately, and to wash your hands and stay home if you're sick. Uh, our caregivers and patients throughout the community need your support in this as well. Utah's the governor said masking no is required even in the moderate level place. until the end of October anything, when it will be reevaluated. Limiting social gatherings to less than or equal to 10 people in the high level and less than equal to 25 in the moderate level. 
moderate level right now is actually at less than 10 until the 29th, because again, this is a circuit breaker kind of idea. All these patients come from the community, and we don't want to see more patients than we have to. And I think it's just important that everyone takes precautions and takes it seriously. And we want everybody to get the incredibly great high quality care that they get here in Utah. Um, but if, if the numbers keep going up, we will have problems meeting all of those needs. We need to respect what COVID has done and what COVID can continue to do in our community. And when we separate out the fear from the respect, we can learn and we can educate ourselves in terms of what we can do to keep ourselves safe and what we can do to keep our friends, neighbors, and community safe. With that approach, I'm confident that in Southern Utah, we can come together and we can reverse the trend that we're seeing. In Washington County, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.